G'day, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Body Meets Mind podcast, philosophies and strategies for an elevated life. Uh, but before we get into the show, Paulie and I were just discussing uh, our favorite movies. I thought it'd be nice to uh, just bring a little bit of personality, my friend, on, onto the show. Um, right. You mentioned Shawshank. You mentioned Rocky, um, The Godfather. What else? What else? Yeah, Godfather one. Like, I'm a massive Brando fan. Like I crush hard. <laughs> like there's no one I crush more on than Brando. So, uh, Godfather one and two, and um, uh, on the waterfront are probably, you know, kind of godlike status for me. Yeah. Um, and then I've got yeah, as I mentioned, uh, and and then Pacino also just have some has some remarkable. Uh, films his his best acting performance in my opinion dog day afternoon is ridic but um yeah i'll have to give some more thought to things because we just um have been talking about it what about you mate um yeah so yes any any movie that has like some sort of up and coming uh genius um that then is molded by a system that then recreates the system um mm. you know even um uh, uh, the, the movie about Stephen Hawking's life, um, mm. but a beautiful mind, dead poet society, um, um, goodwill hunting, you know, e even very recently, um, uh, Tolkien, have you seen that movie about J.R. No. Tolkien? No, I haven't. Oh man, that I loved that movie. That was brilliant. Cause again, you really? know, early 20th century, um, he goes to the war, and the, the cool thing that the I'll movie does, that. it's awesome, dude. Yeah, I can't remember what it's on. Maybe it's on Prime or something, but I'll <clears> send you a link. Everyone listening, if you're into this kind of movie, um, highly recommend it. You see how his experiences shaped um, the, you know, the formulation of The Hobbit and, and The Lord of the Rings. Wow. There's this That's really awesome. cool scene where he's um, um, sitting with his girlfriend at the time and because he's studying philology, you know, the study of languages. And um, and he's I can't remember exactly what they're, they're saying, but he's like, "Isn't this a weird word? More, more." And she's like, <laughs> "More, de, more, more." And you can just you can just imagine this guy living in the early 20th century just coming up with these like like Mordor and Galadriel and like Elvish language. It's just so cool. Amazing. I just love creativity. That's cool. Definitely one to watch. Yeah, that's great. Speaking of like genius. Um based films have you seen the imitation game oh i love that movie it's a, that's another brilliant movie because it's amazing right. except right. for what happened to that dude i mean just because he was gay yeah. you know and then and and being living in the time that he was just the suffering that he had to endure and he was on didn't he go through some kind of like anti-gay program or something or oh he was complete. he was chemically castrated mm, mm. He, he was removed of all hormones and sexual uh any feeling whatsoever mm. just, uh, just just you know on the side like save you know the allies in the war and then chemically castrated that's know. it thank you thank you yeah. very much <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah unbelievable yeah. well mate we uh we have an exciting podcast um topic today i think this is um this would come up a lot in both my world and your world, um, you know, bottom up approach, top down approach. I think mm. as always, you and I can meet in the middle here. Mm. Um, did you want to introduce the, the topic for us? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's particularly uh, relevant to, to, to both, but I actually think I always say that movement, whatever health pursuit you choose to take, it starts in your mind. But in saying that, now that I say it out loud, it can also start in your body because yeah. this is a, a really, really poignant prob, uh, um, issue or um, cog in the wheel of motivation that I want to address later on. Mm. The topic of today's conversation is how do you get started? How do you find that motivation? How do you find that consistency to keep whatever you choose that is going to benefit your life mm -hmm. going uh, in the long term? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, just, um, you know, when you and I are both working in the CrossFit, um, in the CrossFit gym, how many times did you hear something like, I really want to do CrossFit, but I just want to get fit first. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know, you hear that 
in, in all its different derivations across as many industries as you can conceive, I need to do something first so that I do the thing that I ultimately want to do. Yes. But exactly. doing the thing, and there's, I mean, there's this, um, there's this idea about motivation is if you were as motivated as you possibly could be, mm -hmm. didn't do the thing, then you weren't motivated enough. <laughs> yeah, spot on. And and it's this, once again, it's this whole kind of world that we, we live in. We need to feel ready and primed to do something that is large, but ultimately it's the doing of the action that is going to motivate us to continue doing it. Absolutely. And, and you know, and we will get into this, but there are so many things that you can do um, to, to really help you with this. And, and one thing that I do that's become a staple in my life is when I want to get up early, I mean, I never get up early if my phone is next to me in, in the bedroom, you know, because mm -hmm. I can turn it off straight away um, and I'll just fall back to sleep. You know, mm -hmm. if my phone is in the other room, maybe even not then will I be able to get up because then I just come back into bed. What I actually have to do is, and our kind of corridor is um, just next to our bedroom, I'll have my phone alarm outside on um, on some shelves and I also put my clothes there. So by the time I wake up, um, I have to get up because I have to turn that bloody thing off because it's waking mm -hmm. the whole bloody house up. <laughs> to get out of bed means I'm now cold because yeah. I need to get my clothes. And then by the time I've put my clothes on and turned uh, – the alarm off the night before I've just got my coffee organized. So what goes on in my head is like, well, I may as well just go and make it. So it's just this like <clears throat> removal of obstacles that would get in the way of my goal and just getting into that next thing. It's motivation is, is for me, it's just kind of like a wave of what's the, the next slightly harder thing I may as well do. Cause I'm here. <laughs> Spot on. And, and, and I think you, you touch on a really, really um, poignant, part of what getting shit done is all about and um to articulate the way i see it is is it's about rigging your environment so you win the game mm -hmm. in this particular instance the game is getting your ass out of bed and being productive first thing in the morning well you know, whoever invented the snooze on <laughs> uh, on the alarm uh definitely most likely did not, uh, um, you know, weren't, weren't, su weren't super productive. And, 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 and the reason being. <laughs> we, we, we should actually fact check that, but I believe it was John Snooze. Uh, John Snooze. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a Captain Snooze. I yeah, think Captain was, Snooze, sorry, yeah. He, he, he slept a lot. <laughs> get a lot done. Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. In, in any event, it's, it's like if you want to learn guitar, Put your guitar in the middle of the, um, you know, in, in the middle of the room where you're spending the most time. Mm. You know, if stuff is going to be locked away in a cupboard, uh, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a major part of your life. So setting your environment's massive. I tell my hero, mums and dads, very very regularly. The first thing we want to be able to do is to cleanse our. Uh, our pantries of food that we don't want to be necessarily eating when our guard is down. Mm. It's like if you are on some kind of health kick or whatever it might be, if you're looking to eat in a way that's going to serve your body and your mind, it's okay to have chocolate. But what I would say to that is remove the chocolate in your house and, and, and you know, make it as challenging as possible mm -hmm. to go and get that chocolate. And if you feel mm. like it's worth getting into your car, going down to the shops and getting a block of chocolate, bravo, kudos to you. You wanted that chocolate a lot and it. you get your chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. So, so when, what, what, when, when the topic of motivation comes up um, with you and the people you work with, what are people kind of typically asking? So a lot of people really are just struggling with accountability, right? Uh, the mo motivation is a tricky one. The word motivation, I feel, um, peaks really early in, in somebody's experience of um, trying to achieve something. Mm -hmm. Typically in the first uh, few days, you know, that, that motivation is super high. And then when challenges come up in the experience of trying to achieve that goal, 
then, uh, you know, imposter syndrome comes in and, uh, you know, self-talk, negative self-talk comes about and they're like, who am I to be able to achieve this? You know what? I'm, I'm just going to go back to something that was a lot more comfortable and uh, familiar, which mm. was my old self. So this motivation thing is powerful, but it's fleeting in my mind. So what we need to really establish is um, these safeguards to put into place to be able to say, right, you've got this peak of motivation, right? You want to do something. You're, you've got a firecracker up your butt ready to go, right? So how are you going to use that to your advantage in the short term? But at the same time, how are you going to set things in and around your environment externally and internally for when that motivation dwindles and it will dwindle. So it's like, how are you going to be able to keep going with this momentum when that motivation takes a dip? It's so true. You know, and I think um, one one of the really important um, spaces that's coming out now uh, in the self-help industry is, uh, you know, neuroscience is becoming much more um, accessible, you know, and you and I both love following Dr. Andrew Huberman. And I think he does a lot on, on uh, the neuro um, transmitter dopamine, which is, which is the, the neurotransmitter that's responsible for motivation and reward. Mm. And, and I, I love hearing about the neuroscience because it breaks it all down into what fundamentally drives us. And it's, it's literally just staying alive and procreation. That's yeah. really how we're wired. And, you know, you think about, um, really trying to understand what a chimp does to in order to procreate or stay alive and then kind of hack that or 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 use that knowledge base and apply it to the areas of your life that you're struggling in mm-hmm. it's a it's a it's a wonderful way to really understand how you can achieve your goals and and the thing is you know to use an example of food um you know, to kind of go along with, with what you're saying is here is you got a chimp. And I was, I was having a conversation about this recently with a client, you know, if you're, you're a chimp out there in the middle of nowhere and you're really hungry, it, it's going to be fear and pain that's motivating you more than, you know, quote unquote motivation and goal driven, purpose driven, I'm happy mm-hmm. sort of thing. If I don't find a banana tree, I'm going to die. Fear is the motivational force there, you know, and now we live in a world where we have as many banana trees as we could possibly want in our house around us Mm -hmm. that grow all the time and we just press a button and it comes to us. So what we actually have to do is remove the banana trees and our ability to access the bananas to make it really hard. And, you know, Tony Robbins says, um, burn the boats, make it impossible not to achieve your goal because the alternative is, is dire. Yeah. Totally, totally. And, uh, you know, the whole burn your boats, uh, you know, metaphor and analogy is, uh, it's a powerful one because it gives you a real sense of discomfort and um, it gives you a sense of unfamiliarity because growing up in the world that we all grow up in, in a developed nation um, that we, we live in, uh, that we have our creature comforts around us. We're not, we don't know what it's like to mm. be in that survival mode. But when people are in that survival mode, they get shit done. You know, that is what motivates you to actually get stuff done. So being in that element of discomfort is powerful. And, you know, like I, I break things and results down into, you know, there's a, there's a couple of different kind of, um, I suppose brackets that I that I look at, and one is the outcome that we're looking for, and the, the, these goals that you were saying. But then another step is um, the process. How are you going to be able to actually get from point A to point B? Mm-hmm. A- and then there's the identity shift. It's like, who are you going to become once you've achieved this? Mm. You know, and, and and those three aspects are really really powerful because it's like. And I and I think they're all relevant in in the in the process of being able to achieve something. So you identify a goal, but once you identify that goal, I think it's important to just leave that there for a moment and and focus on the process. And uh, because we're yes. so 
because we're so anchored uh, and we're so swayed by this goal and we're so such victims of, um, you know, comparing ourselves to others um, based on where they might be at the same point in time to, to where we are, um, we can get really dissuaded by achieving a, a goal. And often it's not, it's not accurate at all. It's all just made up in our minds. But being able to achieve something or should I say, identifying the process. And I want to use an example just to give give us something tangible, right? So let's call it um, looking to uh, run a marathon, okay? Mm-hmm. So we, we identify that we want to run a marathon in six months' time, right? So that's the goal. I want to run a marathon in six months' time. I don't care what time it is. I just want to run a marathon in six times. So the process is going to be, you know, actually – um, reverse engineering a running program to be able to get you to a point where you're running 21 point so and so kilometers mm. uh, in six months time. So maybe you start by walking around the block because yeah. you know you haven't you haven't run yet. So um, let's just assume that you're walking around the block and then you build up slowly and you just use the laws of uh, progressive overload to get you to this point. But it's very, very easy for you to look at that twenty six, uh, that twenty one kilometer mark uh, at, at week two and say, "I'm an awful disappointment. I can't even run for more than thirty seconds." Yes. Bugger this! I'm going back to the couch and watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> hey, man, I've been watching that. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one either. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um. So, and, and and then the powerful thing is, is being able to understand who you are going to become. You know, you're not, you're not, you haven't run 21 kilometers. You're a runner. You're an athlete, mm. you know, you're mm. an athlete in the making. And in that six month time, you identify, you can surround yourself with people with common goals that are trying to achieve the exact same thing. So you can surround yourself yeah. with running communities people that are in this tribe that you are a part of, which is super powerful once you have that identity. So, mate, let, let's let's actually um, do a little experiment here because <clears throat> I love um, that point so much. I, I, and it's something that's seldom discussed and I, I want it to really be understood, <clears throat> not for everyone necessarily, <clears throat> excuse me, just listening or watching, but for, for us too. <clears throat> you know, we might have goals um, with this podcast to have, you know, 10,000 listeners, an episode and a, a bang and YouTube channel. Um, and they are worthy goals, but would you agree that the reason why we even started this together, aside from the fact that we get along, we're great mates is that you and I both have a deep joy of conveying information. Without a doubt. And I think we have, a, we, we have identified you know, to a certain degree, mm-hmm. what what type of goals we want to be able to achieve when it comes to this podcast. But if we don't continue to reference back why we enjoy doing this, then our motivation for doing this podcast two times a week is going to dwindle very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. If, if if our only motivation um, to to do this podcast is to to rival that of you know Joe Rogan or um, whoever it might be, then we're going to be disappointed for a very very long time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and that disappointment can build up, can build up because your only reference point is, bugger, I'm I, we've only got X amount of downloads, we've only got this. But if we sit there, we have a goal setting session, and we're like, right, this is what. We, we have, this is what we want to be able to achieve. And this is how we're going to reverse engineer the process to be able to get there. And then we put it on the shelf for a moment and we just focus on the process. Then we are really just staying connected and concerned with the heartbeat of why we're trying to do this because yes. people getting into things for the wrong reasons. I mean, that's exactly why their motivation dips because yep. It's a, it's a fleeting, um, it's a fleeting world that you yes. can stay in there. We'll see, and and now let's bring it back to to the point of this discussion because that that's an integral element to this. It's when you think about, you know, you, you've set yourself a goal, then you want to think about who you're going to become as a result of achieving that goal, and then you want to think about 
is that person that you are going to inevitably become someone you want to become? Mm. Because if it's not, then take away the goal because you're not going to like who you're going to become. Yeah. So, and this is why I often ask kind of cliche um, questions to people I work with because um, some of it is um, overly complicated in this day and age. We all want that secret formula for figuring out how to do things. Yeah. But you know, and I'm sure I've said this on a podcast before, I love that quote, practice isn't something you do, it's something who you are. You know, mm. if you identify as a brilliant basketball player or if you identify as someone who just loves playing basketball, you're going to be doing it more. So you're going to get better at it, you know. Yeah. And if yeah. you just come back to asking yourself, um, you know, what do I enjoy? What do I do that, that passes the time? You're going to be better at that thing than anyone else. Now you might say, well, I don't know what it is that I enjoy, but I still have this goal that I, that I want to lose weight. And then you might go out there and you might try a couple of things, you know, mm -hmm. you might do CrossFit, you might do a dance class, you might enjoy fasting, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but what's more enjoyable is going to keep you on the path. And it's so, so important to remind yourself of that because it's what ultimately gets us out of bed every day. It's what fulfills us. It's, it's what becomes our thing. Because we, yep. we seem to, for some bizarre reason, be enjoying it more than anyone else. And we can't understand why no one else enjoys it. <laughs> you, you, you're right. And being able to find that something that you enjoy so much is going to be that, that alluring aspect that is going to uh, draw people in. And then I feel falling in love with the, uh, the challenges associated yep. with it as well. You know, it's like this kind of game that you can play. It's like... I don't know, uh, kind of like uh, Tetris, you know. If you're playing a game of Tetris and, um, you know, challenges build up in a pursuit that you're trying to achieve, well, you know, what what happens? Well, that that world starts to build up. These shapes start to get right to the top. But then all of a sudden you figure out the missing piece and then all the shapes connect and it dissolves down again. And yes. you're like, yeah, one. Nailed it. <laughs> but but if you look at if you look at the world uh like a bit of a game, uh all of a sudden uh, you can be playful, you can be curious, and you can have fun with the process and not be attached to the outcome. Now, this is easier said yeah. than done. I'm I I I'm uh, fall victim to this as much as anybody else to uh, sometimes, you know, really, really uh, be concerned with the outcome. Uh, sure. But if you have that sense of self-awareness to be able to draw yourself back to the process, it can be a really, really playful pursuit and a really playful experience of life. Totally, man. So, so, so what would you say? Okay. So let's just say we've got um, Johnny and Sandra out there. <laughs> it's been two Johnnies in this day and age um, yeah. on this podcast. <laughs> um and, you know, that's all well and good. Hey, Paulie. Hey, Tom, we love the esoteric philosophical stuff, but, you know, really I'm just struggling to, you know, continue on this exercise program. I, I was really motivated to, to do um, this, this daily journaling practice, um, but, but I've fallen off. Um, can you help me out? You know, where, where would we start? Okay. So Johnny, uh, what was what were you looking to achieve when you actually did this uh, this exercise program and uh, this journaling practice? How regularly did you want to train? Well, yeah. So uh, you know, I I I know it. I mean, I, I do want to lose some weight. Um, you know, I uh, I I. Uh, I, I've always, I've, I've always been a little bit overweight. I've always wanted to lose weight and I kind of go through dips and then I, and then, and then highs, I tend to self-sacrifice and sabotage a little bit, but I, this time I was really ready. I suppose I just wanted to look good, feel good. And, and that's why I did the journaling too. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, look, not, not the weight is everything, but let's just, you mentioned weight. So let's just pluck a number out of the air and just say, you know, uh, how, how much weight is it that you wanted to kind of achieve a loss in? Yeah. Well, not, not that I actually had that plan, but you know, I'm, I'm 105 now. I would have loved to have get down to gotten down to 90. I'm about six foot right now. Um, you know, my doctor said that would be optimal. Yeah. Great. So you, you want to lose 15 kilos in, uh, you know, in, in a period of time, why don't we start really small? Okay. You talked about journaling, you talked about exercise. Why don't we start by, you know, getting your book out before, uh, you know, the moment you, you wake up and you write a couple of sentences down, 
you know, every other day, right? Mm. And then uh, when it comes to walking, uh, sorry, when it comes to exercise, let's just go for a walk after dinner every night, okay? Mm. Go for a walk around the block after after dinner every night. And I, all I want you to do is start reporting to me about what food it is that you're eating throughout the day. And if I feel, so I'm, we're removing ourselves yes, from yes. role playing now. <laughs> That's right. With my, with my coaching, I've felt that the easiest way to go about doing this is to create a certain filter of self-awareness first. When, when it comes to food, it's like taking a photo of something and we've heard about journaling and all of that, just, just for a, a short period of time, really gives you that sense of awareness be, between that unconscious loop between, you know, the food going into your, your mouth and um you know, and uh, so so creating that photo just interrupts that mindless cycle. Mm. But the, the point for the exercise is, is just starting off slowly, doing something that is 1% more than you have done previously. And uh, these large, profound gestures associated with um, transformation are very, very alluring theoretically because it's like, you know, what the hell is going for a walk around the block going to do? You know, but they're the building blocks for you to be able to create um, something even greater the next week. And you continue along the process because no one's in a hurry. Mm. We're not, you know, entering a bodybuilding competition next week. Uh, we're after really, really sustainable processes to build on so we can make them a part of your identity yeah. and then shift it in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. And you, it, you're so spot on, you know, you know, even if we were to achieve everything that we wanted to achieve in 48 hours, we wouldn't have become that person. So of course we would um, regress back into to who we were because it, you just haven't become that person. You know, I mean, you know, it takes time and molding and pain and challenge and discomfort for the mm. ego to become another ego. Um, and you, unfortunately, there's no other way. Um, so rather than have a giant traumatic experience and become someone tomorrow, um, you know, take your time with it, figuring it yeah, out along the way. Take, take your time with it, feel the discomfort. As uh, as our friend Ryan Holiday says, the obstacle is the way. Totally, totally. Yeah. Mate, it's uh, it's always brilliant catching up with you. Um, you uh, never cease to impress me with the topics of discussion that, um, that you come up with. I think today was another um, testament to that. And, um, yeah, guys, we, re we really hope that you're um, getting some value from from our content. Um, we're about 20 shows in now, which is just so exciting for us. Um, you know, who would have thought that this would have been, um, you know, the podcast, uh, you know, going off what we did years ago when we first started interviewing each other, you know, um, back in the day, Paulie. So, um, yeah, such a pleasure to, to, to bring this content to you guys. And, Paulie, always such a pleasure to be talking with you, mate. Yeah, thank you, Tommy. Likewise, it's uh, it's always refreshing to be able to just have great, dense um, conversations with you and what you bring to the table is just always refreshing and a really, really great sense that I would not have thought of as well. And I always, you always give me food for thought about topics that we uh, talk about afterwards and I try to apply that stuff to my life as well. Mm, mm, mate, absolutely. Well, guys... <laughs> Thank you so much once again. Uh, we will talk to you next week. And uh, until that time, bye for now. We should come up with like some sort of like until then, body meets mind. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it.